Acts, the second chapter. Start verse 21, I think it is. Yeah. Acts chapter 2, verse 21. Read. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Here we go. So called Christians with their scripture isolation will see this and say, boom, we in there. Got him. No, 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 no. This ain't what it's talking. Well, it is what it's talking about. But if you keep it in its context, you'll know that it's speaking of the children of Israel. Real quick. Read the next verse. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jump back up to verse 21 and read that. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these, these words. Words. Okay, y'all. This, this, this ain't no rocket science now. It, it, what we're saying right now, as you all are probably seeing, is redundant. Same thing over and over. Y'all understand the, the way that the Most High put this Bible together. We can't even fathom. You understand, if things weren't worded the way, the way that they were, we wouldn't have this Bible. Real quick, give me 2 Peter's. I believe that's what I want. 2 Peter's chapter 1, verse 20. 2 Peter's chapter 1, verse 20. Come on. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. No prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. So so-called Christians stop with, well, this is what the scripture means to me. Ain't no such thing. It is what it is. The scriptures don't mean what it means. And it was written the way that it was written. So it would say what it would say. Ain't no, everybody wants to have that uh, so-called personal relationship with God. When this ain't got, we have standards. The Most High gave standards to the children of Israel. It wasn't, well, how do you feel that law? How do you feel that, that laws to be kept? How do you feel this laws to be kept? It wasn't nothing that everybody went by their own standards by. Okay, so it says, read that again, verse 20. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. No prophecy of scripture is any private interpretation. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, mightest overcome when thou art judged. Read. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but by holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So the prophecy uh, came not in old time by the will of man. Men didn't just decide they're going to come together and write this beautiful story that we know as the Bible today. Uh-uh. Not possible. The Most High put the Spirit on those men and used those men to write his words. That's what happened. So understand that everything's worded. Things that, the way that the prophets wrote, the way that the apostles wrote, they did it for a purpose. The Most High had them do it for a reason. A lot of the stuff that, that's going over you all's heads in so-called Christianity, it's going over your heads because the way that the Most High worded it. And you won't understand it unless you're keeping the commandments. Real quick, give me Psalm 78. Psalms chapter 78, read verse 1 when you get it. Psalm chapter 78, verse 1. Come on. Give ear, O my people. Listen to my law. He said, give ear, meaning listen, O my people, to my law. Read. And climb your ears to the word of my mouth. Why is he saying this first? Because what? Like, we, we didn't read it today, but I'm sure if you all have been watching my page, we go over Psalms chapter 111, verse um, 10. It says what? A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. The most I say, give ear to my law. He says what? He says, incline your ears to the words of my mouth. Come on. And I will open my mouth in a parable. If you want to understand, you better be keeping these laws. Because guess what? This Bible is, is shut to so-called Christians. Period. And I know a lot of y'all don't like my temperament. A lot of y'all don't like the way that I'm saying things. But hey, it is what it is. I don't know any other way. To, to say it to you so you understand. Matter of fact, this is the way that I got it. And I didn't get all prideful and emotional. I said, I can't, I can't argue with what the man's telling me. He's showing me the scriptures. It's really not him. I'm reading myself. I can read. I can see. I, this is what it says. Read. I will utter dark sayings of old. Come on. Which we have heard and known. And our fathers have told us. So the most I said, he's going to open his mouth in a parable. This Bible has is a parable to those that don't keep the commandments, period. Go back. Read verse uh, 21 again in 2 Peter's. 
2 Peter chapter 1, verse 21. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but by holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy so Ghost. Understanding that what? The Most High wrote this through his the holy men who were given the Holy Spirit to write these words. The Most High used them. And if you're not keeping his commandments, you're not going to understand these words. So when we go to things like this in Acts, the second chapter, it's going to go over your head. That's why you have the first thing you must do is repent, understand who you are and repent. We're going to cover that before we leave this lesson. But go, let's go back to Acts chapter 2 because I want to show you something real quick. Acts chapter 2, read verse 20, I'm sorry. Read verse 16. Acts chapter 2, verse 16. Come on. But this is what, but this is that which was spoken by Joel the prophet. This was, was spoken by the prophet Joel. When you read, matter of fact, read verse 17. Verse 17. And this shall come to pass in the last days, said God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, read. and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Okay, so when you read this all the way down, keep it in its context, you'll understand that this was written in, by, uh, in Joel's. This is where he got this from. Well, let's see where he got this from so that whosoever will be knocked out of the park for these so-called Christians that's out there. Give me Joel's chapter 2. Start at verse 28. Joel chapter 2 verse 28 Come on. and it should come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh wait a minute we just read that in Acts chapter 2 verse 17 it goes down verbatim read and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions okay so wait a minute jump down to verse 32 verse 32 and it shall come to pass that whosoever, that who? That whosoever. Okay, here we go. Is this speaking about everybody? Read. Shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Okay, well, everybody's in the door, right? Read. For in Mount Zion. In Mount Zion. And in Jerusalem. And in Jerusalem. Shall be deli delivered. Read on. As the Lord has said, and the remnant whom the Lord shall call. And the remnant who the Lord shall call. There's going to be deliverance in Israel, Mount Zion and Jerusalem. That's what he's speaking of. Real quick, don't leave here. We in Joel's chapter 2. Go up some a few verses to verse 27 in Joel's the second chapter. Verse 27. I started in 28, but notice when you go to Acts the second chapter and the 17th verse, it didn't go one verse above. Well, let's find out what else Joel was saying. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. In the midst of who? In the midst of the Israel. The Most High is in the midst of Israel. He's with the children of Israel. Read. That I am the Lord your God. He says, I'm the Lord your God. Read. And none else. And none else. He's not the God of the so-called Chinese. He's not the God of the so-called white man. He's not the God of the so-called East Indian. He's not the God of the so-called Africans. He's the God of the children of Israel, as it's been since day one. Ain't nothing changed. Read. And my people shall never be ashamed. There's nothing you should be ashamed of. There's nothing that you should, should feel out of place of because what? The Most High chose you. Our people are the first ones. You, you bring this out. They're the first ones to say, well, well what about them? And, and you notice, ain't nobody at the Dagon Lottery's uh, house when they get that big ticket Tell me, well, did everybody else win? <laughs> did, did everybody else hit the lotto? No. You got something more than a lotto, brothers and sisters. You got something more than a daggone lottery ticket. You understand that you're an Israelite and that you must keep the commandments and faith in Christ. There ain't nothing a lottery ticket is going to do for you when Christ comes back. So what more should you take this Bible? What, what more should you do with this? Worry about everybody else. Worry about yourself and making it through them doors. From there, give me 2nd Ezra chapter 6. 2nd Ezra, the 6th chapter. Now, um, for those of you who may not be familiar, this is the Apocrypha. You could go to a Christian uh, bookstore, um, Mardell's. What's another bookstore that may carry? Uh, many bookstores. 
Right. You'll be able to find this bookstore at any Christian store you go to. Why? Because it's in the Bible. This is actually, when you understand the Apocrypha, it was originally in this uh, the King James Version Bible. It was Protestants who later had the Apocrypha removed because of the things they were saying. Yeah, Protestants, not you so-called Blacks, Hispanics, Native American Indians. Y'all didn't have this taken out. The so-called white man had this taken out because of things that it said like this. Give me second there, just chapter 6. Read verse 50. Start at 54. Second Ezra, chapter 6, verse 54. Read. And these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all. So of Adam comes everybody. Everybody comes from Adam now. Okay, read on. And the people whom thou hast chosen. Wait, wait, you see the distinction? It says everybody comes from Adam as well as the people whom thou hast chosen. Who's that? The children of Israel. Read. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. Our sakes. The most I made the world for our sakes, the children of Israel. Read. As for the other people. As for the other people, read. Which also came come of Adam. Which also came from Adam. Come on. Thou hast said, they are nothing. But they are what? They are nothing. Now, that might be harsh for a lot of you all out there. I'm not going to speak against the Bible. This is the mind frame you have to have. The Bible said it. I'm going to run with that. I'm going to believe that. I'm going to understand that and accept it. And you can't go nowhere else. The most I said... Uh, as for the other people which also come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing. Read on. But be like unto spittle. Be like unto spittle. You know what spittle is? Spit. Come on. And has likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. And have likened the abundance of them like a drop that falls from a vessel. If you got a bucket of water, right? And a little, here, here go my cup. Imagine this to be a big bucket. And a little bitty drop drips and hits the ground. Is, 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 is the operation over? No, I still got this big bucket of water. I don't care about the little drop that hit the floor. You serious? He says he's likened the other nations as a drop that, that fallen from a vessel. Read. Verse 57. And now, O Lord, behold, these heathens. These who? These heathens. These heathens, these other nations. Come on. Which have ever been reputed. As nothing come on have been have begun to be lords over us and devour us. That's right, black man, black woman. At one point in time, you were the kings and queens of this earth. You were the one that was held above everyone else. You were the one that everybody else wanted to be like. Now the tables turn. Everybody wanted to be white. Everybody wanted to be uh white, light skin with, with straight hair, right? No, they they wanted to be like us because we were above everybody. But now what? The tables have turned. These heathens that were ever reputed as nothing, reputed as nothing, have begun to be lords over us. Well, guess what? Now they are lords over us. Most High sent us uh, into the hand of our enemies for us breaking the laws. Now, let's say somebody has a problem. You know, we read from the Apocrypha. Y'all wrong. That ain't in the Bible. Okay. Well, let's read this from the another part of the Bible that you take to church with you every Sunday. Give me Isaiah chapter 40. Start at verse 15. Isaiah chapter 40. Verse 15. Read. Behold, the nations are as but behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket. Okay, hold on, hold on. But we went straight into it. <laughs> he says the nations are as a drop of a bucket. But we go, let's go up a few. So if, if any of y'all have a problem with that, we're gonna go up a few verses so it might be able to settle into your stomach, understanding your position and the most high's position. Start at verse 12. Verse 12. Who have measured the waters in the hollow of his, hand, of, of his hand. He says, who have measured the waters in the hollow of his hand? Come on. And have meted out the heaven with the, with the span. And meted out heavens with the span, meaning measured the heavens. Who, who done did that? Who's measured the waters in the hollows of his hands? Or who can measure the, 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 the stars in the, the, the universe? Read. And, and have and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure. Who knows how many little pieces of dust is on the face of the earth? Read. And weigh the mountains in his scale and scales. Anybody know how much the mountains weigh? Your scientists, y'all don't believe in that that science mess. Well, how, anybody know how much the earth weighs? Anybody knows how that Mount Mount Everest, how much that weighs? Come on. And the hills in a balance. Read. Who have directed? Hence, meaning no one but the Most High. Read. Who have directed the spirit of the Lord? Who directed the spirit of the Lord? Who's told? Hey, listen, no, this is what you need to do, Lord. 
Who's doing that? Read. Or being his counselor have taught him. Or being his counselor taught the most high. No one. Read. With whom took he counsel? And who have instructed him and taught him and the path of judgment? Who did the most high take counsel with? Like, listen, I'm, I'm creating the earth and the, all the nations. Um, you think I should make everybody the same? <laughs> or should I should I put a few above? Or what, what should I do? Who did he do that with? No one. Come on. And have taught him knowledge. And show him the way of understanding. No one. Nobody taught the most, high, the most high. Nobody gave the most high understanding. Read. Behold. Behold. The nations are as a drop of a bucket. If you got a problem with that, you got a problem with the most high. Come on. And I count it as a small dust of the balance. And I count it as a small dust of the balance. The most high said they are counted like if you take a balance, a weighing instrument, and you put a little speck of dust on there, is that going to make the, the balance tilt? No. Come on. Behold, he taketh up the owls as a very little thing. Read. And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn. Whoa. Nor the beast thereof sufficient for a burnt off. Most I said in Lebanon, it ain't even sufficient to burn. You couldn't take those people and make a burnt offering to the Most High by burning them. It says neither the beast thereof. Come on. All the nations before him. It says all nations before him. Read. Are as nothing. Are as what? Are as nothing. Come on. But they are counted to him less than nothing. Vanity. Whoa. It says they are counted to him less than nothing. If you got a problem with this, you got a problem with God. Period. As we showed you, we went through John 3, 16. We, we've shown you many scriptures on top of scriptures to show you who the Most High chose. Period. If you have a problem with that, I don't know what to tell you. Let's wrap it up. Give me Revelations, 21st chapter. We, we're going to hear the conclusion of the matter. Revelations, chapter 21. Read verses 1 and 2 first. Revelations, chapter 21, verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. This is John the Revelator writing what he saw. Come on. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. He saw New Jerusalem. He's seen the kingdom being built right here on earth. Come on. Prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. He said prepare, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. The Most High has prepared a, is preparing a city for us. And this is what John the Revelator is seeing. He's going to describe it. Real quick, jump to verse 12. Verse 12. Come on. And had a great and had a wall, great and high. It says in this place that he's seen had a wall great and high, read. And had twelve gates. And had twelve gates, read. And and had, and at the gates, twelve angels. And standing at those gates, he had twelve angels standing guard at those gates, read. And the names written thereon. And there was names written on each gate. Come on. Which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Oh, hold on. This is talking about New Jerusalem. We're talking about the kingdom now. It says around it, it had 12 gates, and at the gates, 12 angels. And there was names written on each gate, which were the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Explain this. If you're not from the tribe of Judah, how are you going to get through that gate? If, if you come to my door, here's my, my door. My doorstep says um, the Jenkins, whatever. We're going to just use word names. The Jenkins. If you're not a Jenkins and you ain't given access to this gate, how are you supposed to walk through this gate? Hence, what if there's an angel standing at this gate, at this door? You're not getting through. Now, why did he, is there a separate gate for all the above? Let's see if we read that. Hold on. Read verse, <laughs> read verse 12 again. And had a wall, great and high, and 12 gates, and at the gate, 12 angels. Read. And the names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. I, I didn't see an all above gate. You didn't see that one? Everybody else, you didn't see a gate that said everybody? I, I, I don't read that here. Because it's not there. The Most High said what he said. It got, there's 12 gates, and there's going to be angels at these gates. And those gates are for the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. So, for all those who are of uh, black, Hispanic, Native American descent, 
whose forefathers went through the curses listed in Deuteronomy 28th chapter, or you and you understand what these scriptures are saying, and you're ready to repent, guess what? This is for you. But some of our people ain't going to hear this. Some of our people are not going to want to change. They're not going to get themselves together. Well, I don't know what to tell you. If you don't want to repent and change your ways, there's nothing else for you. Real quick, give me um, 2 Kings chapter 8. Second Kings the eighth chapter. I'm sorry, yeah, first Kings the eighth chapter. Start at verse 46. First Kings chapter 8, verse 46. Come on. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not. And if thou be angry with them, and thou deliver them to the enemy, so that they carry them away captives unto the land of the enemy. Far or near. And this has happened to us. This has happened to the children of Israel. When you look at previous videos that we've done in Israel United in Christ, you'll see that the Deuteronomy 28th chapter are those curses that we're going to receive for breaking the Most High's laws. And he's going to send us, he's going to scatter us among all people upon the face of the earth. Read on. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves in a land whether they will carry captives and repent and will make supplication unto thee in the land of them, that carried them captive. That's right now. It says, yet that they shall bethink themselves. What does it mean to bethink yourself? Remember who you are. The only way you're going to remember is unless you get into this Bible and understand. Go to the Deuteronomy 28th chapter and read and understand that the Most High said those curses were for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. We're going to be able to see these curses and see these curses as a sign to identify us as the children of Israel. It says if we bethink ourselves, in the land, whether we were carried captives, where we were carried as slaves, and repent, come on, saying, well, I'm sorry, and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captives, read, saying, we have sinned. We have sinned. This is what we have to say right here in the land of them that took us away as slaves. We have to say we have sinned. We have learned the traditions and customs of these heathens. We were taught their ways, and we completed what they wanted us to complete. Lord, we have sinned. We worship idols. We worship Christianity. We worship that white Jesus. We have sinned, Lord. This is what we have to say. We have sinned. We have broken your law, statutes, and commandments. Read. And have done perversely. We have done perversely. Read on. And we have committed wickedness. Read on. And so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul. And return back to the Most High with all of our hearts and souls. Put away these idols. Put away these false holidays like Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving, Mother's Day, Father's Day, all this nonsense. Read. And the land of their enemies, which led them away a captive, and pray, which led them away captive, and prayed unto thee toward in their land, toward their land, which thou gavest to their fathers, and the city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name. Once we do this, once we repent. Once we make supplication to the Most High, saying we have sinned and done perversely, and we do it right here in the land of our enemies. It says, and pray unto thee toward their land. That's why you understand why we pray to the east. We pray to the east so the Most High will return us back to our homeland like he told us he was going to do in Isaiah 14. We pray that the Most High redeems us as he did. He sent us the Son. But when he returns, that we're found worthy to go back home. Read on. Verse 49. Verse 49. Then hear thou their prayer and their supplication in heaven and thy dwelling place and maintain their cause. It says, then hear thou their prayer. That's when the Most High is going to hear your prayer. When you repent. Give me John chapter 9 verse 31. When we repent and keep the commandments. That's when the Most High is going to hear our prayers. We got to do that first. Otherwise, falling on deaf ears. You crying, boo-hooing. That's what everybody thinks because you in church wheezing and sniffling and all of this, you closer to God. No, 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 no. That is not how it works. It says, then hear thou their prayer and their supplication and having thy dwelling place and maintain their cause, meaning answer their prayers. Give me John chapter 9, verse 31. St. John chapter 9, verse 31. Read. Now we know that God hear not sinners. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. Read. But if any man be a worshiper, a worshiper of God 
And do with his will. And do with his will. Give me the will of the Most High. It says, now we know that God here is not sinners. A person that is going to just completely say, oh, well, we we were born in sin, so you're going to do it. So when you mess up, just say, God, forgive me, and everything's all right. And you just continue to do the same thing, the same thing. You are a professional adulterer. you doing the same thing, same thing. And you still run into church talking about, God, forgive me, God, forgive me. That's not how this works. God don't hear people like that. God don't hear people who will not turn from their sins. Read on. Oh, I'm sorry, read that. Give me the will of God. Psalm chapter 40, verse 8. Read on. I delight to do thy will, O oh my God. You have to find out what the will of God is. Because what John 9, 31 say, it said, Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. Well, what's the will of God? Yea, the law. Is within my heart. The laws is the will of God. Keeping his commandments is what the most I told you to do. So, brothers and sisters, we pray that this lesson was informative. Uh, th those of you all who may not um, be fully involved, or this might be one of the first videos you may have checked out, there are many videos showing you who we are. This lesson was mostly uh, uh, guided to showing our people the most high deals with Israel. The most high chose Israel. All right? So, we pray you all got something out of this lesson. I'm Brother Abiel. This is Brother Kabash. We're going to say shalom. Shalom.